So today, how to. Um, sharing my passion and our lessons learned from working on a lot of boats, both here in Vancouver, on the island, and on the Sunshine Coast. And it's about, the takeaway, the subtitle there is really important. It's about improving your boat's electrical system. It's very rare that we ever get on a situation where we start from scratch. There's no electrical at all and we build it. It happens, we'll probably do about five of those projects a year, but that's, that's pretty rare. We're actually doing a complete build. So it's about improving your electrical system, making it better. So before we get started, uh, cell phones off please. If you think it's off, can you please make sure it's off? It's gonna be a little bit distracting. Um, I'm also gonna leave questions. We've got all these different building blocks that we're gonna be targeting and talking about today. We're, I'm gonna leave questions at the end because there's a lot of content related and then we can pause, go through everything we learned, recap, and then ask your questions at the end of each section. Take, I recommend taking lots of notes. Um, I'm gonna be giving a lot of information that's gonna be useful to all of you for your own boats. And that was the question. I'm gonna make sure that the slides are provided online um, so that you can have actually get that as well. All right, so here's sort of the agenda of what we're gonna be talking today. We're gonna talk about storage of energy. We're gonna talk about how do you generate power how do you distribute that power? How do you monitor your system? Um, and then we're gonna talk about even further power distribution, galvanic protection, and we're gonna briefly get into safety, fusing circuit breakers. So for some of you that don't know me, um, I'm Jeff Cote with Pacific Yacht Systems. Um, and I'm um, just gonna go through these points really quickly, but. Big thing that I think the takeaway that I like to emphasize with everyone is the passion that my company and myself have related to electrical systems on boats. It's sort of my fixation in life. And I take, as an engineer, I take a really systematic approach that I wanna share with you today about electrical's not magical. People used to, and I remember when I started boating, people would blame electrical for a lot of things, making it the, the, the culprit, blaming the wires for not being reliable that electrical isn't, but there's nothing more beautiful than electrical because it's actually something tangible, it's predictable, it's like water. There's a flow to it. And so what I'm gonna to try to instill in all of you today is to really look at electrical and not blame the electrical itself, but maybe blame the way it was put into your boat or how things are wired. But when things are done properly, it works. It really works. And the other thing too is for some of you that might not know, <clears throat> um, our team, we take the time every month to right now, we've been doing tech talks in Pacific Yachting for about eight years. And we also write now for Northwest Yachting Magazine uh, down in Washington State in Oregon. We have a monthly column. So if you're kind of into this stuff, and I use the term geeking out, if you're really curious about how things work, we take the time to write two columns every month. So that's another way for you guys uh, and for gals to learn about more about electronics. Hot wires more about electronics and then Tech Talk is about electrical and electronics. All right, a little bit about the company. Just so you know, um, I believe that you get good at anything by repetition. You don't get good because you're smart, you get good by practice. So it's the same thing with your boat, you know? Don't, don't be too daunted, Take, tackle a challenge, know that if you have limited experience over time, it will get easier. I remember when I bought my boat in 2006, I was extremely humbled by how everything looked complicated. But over time, I'm the same person, and just as I learn more about my own boat and other boats, things are getting easier. So you're gonna get, over time, on your own boat, more comfortable. <clears throat> Our business is predominantly based in here in the lower mainland. We have a technician on the coast, um, and also on Vancouver Island. The other big takeaway is, um, and this year we did about um, 1,000 boat projects which we're really proud about. And we also did 90 uh, remote electrical design consultation services. So we have owners and boaters that are from around the world. And we've got some boaters in Venezuela, Singapore, Abu Dhabi, anywhere, people are building boats. And they come to us and they say, hey Jeff, you know, how would I build out my boat? I might not be doing it myself, but I'm gonna have a crew that's gonna build a boat for me, or I'm gonna help. And I think that the takeaway with all of this, which to me resonates a lot is when you build a house or you build anything, work from plans, 
right? Take the time. If you're going to work on your own boat and you're going to tackle a project, think about it first conceptually. What am I going to do? And I was sharing with Nick yesterday or to this morning, another boater that we're working on right now is that at the beginning of your project, you should not get a sense of satisfaction the moment you start a project on your boat. Because the first time you start doing anything on your boat, you should have a really good plan on what you're going to want to achieve and how you're going to do it. And at the beginning, you're not really doing anything that looks productive, but that's the time when you're actually thinking about how everything's going to play out. And then you get busy and you execute. And I always relate, <clears throat> I don't come from a really big engineering background, everything in my family was construction. And I think about how construction projects are built. Nobody just shows up with a hammer, a bunch of wood and starts building. They have a, an idea of what they're going to do, how they're going to do it. it, takes a lot of preparation and then you execute. So that's a really big takeaway. And then uh, for some of you that want more resources, uh, definitely uh, check out our uh, website. We've got thousands of articles, literally videos. I've, we're probably over 200 videos now. And if you really want to get into a topic, we have all these specific videos on different things that we're going to be talking about today as well. All right, so as we talk about, I want everyone to have this in the background, is that at the end of the day, this is electricity, right? Safety first. Um, electricity can either burn you or kill you. Um, faulty electrical, and this is true, it's not an exaggeration, will cause electrical fires. I mean, that's something that's always in the back of my mind. That's something that as a, a boater, you should also think about. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, there's a code for a reason. And that's the point is, the code was built not to annoy you, it's best lessons. What are the things that other boaters have learned through time? And that common knowledge comes back and says, you might not know why they're telling you to do that, but I've never seen a code, honestly, and people get frustrated about code recommendations. I'm always going, no, there's a reason. Just if you don't know, take the time to understand the reason why they did that, and then you'll be like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But there is a reason to why they recommend serving things on your boat via ABYC. And then the other thing too is hire pros. You might be an owner. I have, I have boaters that you know, have no technical background that do great work. And I have other boaters that have technical background that do bad work. So you, know, you never know. It's all about at the end of the day, if you're gonna tackle a project on your boat, is take, do, do it with care and do it not slowly, but methodically. Do it and think about what you're gonna do and do everything and be le pro, right? Don't just do it yourself, but take the time to do it right. And that's really important. Do it right. That's gonna be a big takeaway today. Always gonna to be, that's sort of my motto. I tell that to, you know, we've got a team where about 14 people in our company and I'm always, that's the thing, is like, do it right, do it properly, do it safe. That's really big. All right, so now, giving you a little bit more information on what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to talk about storage of energy. What is that? That's batteries. We're going to talk about power generation. Well, power generation has, there's a lot of ways, you know, commonly people can think about an alternator, a charger. It could be um, solar, fuel cells, AC generators. It could be even wind generator, tow gen. And then you've got, well, okay, now you've got this power, but how do I share this power amongst different battery banks? You know, on a lot of boats, we'll have two battery banks, three battery banks, four battery banks, five battery banks. How do you have one source charge multiple things? That's power sharing. And we'll talk about two different approaches to that, battery combiners and battery isolators. We're going to look into monitoring. You want to know, and I'm a huge proponent about knowing where you are. Not literally in terms of a GPS, but in terms of where your batteries are at. Knowing how much you draw from them. You, in, information is power, and that takes the whole magic out of, oh, my battery suddenly died. No, they didn't suddenly die. For some reason, they gradually got there. How did they get there would have been told by a monitor. Sort of like having a, a fuel gauge on your car or not having one. If you don't have a fuel gauge in your car, you're often going to run out of gas. And it's not because the gas or your car is unpredictable. It's because you don't have a monitoring system to be able to anticipate the fuel or the batteries running out. We're gonna talk about power distribution, we're gonna talk about safety, and we're also gonna talk a little bit about galvanic protection.